This is my ex 
kind of very well uh, recited scriptures, but Psalm 23, 4. That would be our first one. Psalm 23 and 4. And you may remain seated. Father God, we love you so much. Holy Spirit, speak in this place. Have your way in this place, Holy Spirit. You said at that very hour, you give me the words to say. We thank you. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Jesus Christ, and we love you, God. Yes, we thank you for being a triune God. Yes, yes. We love you. Speak in this place, dear God. Strengthen us, dear God, where we're torn down, where we're weak. Strengthen us, dear God, in our storm. Strengthen us, dear God, in our trespasses. Strengthen us, dear God, when we have disobeyed your word. Strengthen us, dear God. Keep us, Lord. Love you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Today's topic is Why are you afraid when God is your strength? Why are you afraid when God is your strength? Because a lot of times in life, we are afraid. Yeah. We're afraid of life. We're afraid of things. And as human beings, yes, we have fear tendencies at times. But God clearly said, I did not give you the spirit of fear. Yeah. Yeah. But of peace and love above what? Sound mind. Yeah, so why be afraid? He told yeah. Moses, don't be afraid. Be courageous, Moses. He told Joshua, don't be afraid. Be courageous, Joshua. For well, I am with you. Yes, and I'll never leave you. But trust in me. How many of you are trusting in God today? Right. Yeah, yeah. How many of you are believing in God today? Yeah. How many of you are praising God today and worshiping yeah. God today for what he is doing in your life? The times that he has kept you over the years because he's the on-time God. Yes, he is. And not only that, but also he's the God of many chances. He's the God who has given you chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. Your name should be chance, actually. Yeah. Because God has given you many chances. Yeah. Numerous chances. Yeah. An influx chances. Yeah. He has given you chance after chance after chance. Even today, now that you say, he's giving you chance after chance after chance after chance. Oh, you cuss. But I give you chance after chance. Oh, you went off. I give you chance after chance. Oh, you punch somebody or slap somebody. I give you chance after chance. Oh, my God. The God of many chances. So why should I be afraid of anything? And I know I serve a God who sits high and looks low. I serve a sovereign God, a powerful God, a God who brought Abraham out, a God who brought Isaac out, a God who brought Jacob out. So why should I be afraid when I know God is my strength? Somebody how long he's my strength. He's my strength. So that brings us to the book of Psalms. Chapter two, well, book 23, verse 4. Yeah. And it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yeah. You may be seated. If you have any type of uh, pen or you want to put it in your smartphone, write this down for number one. God is your strength in your darkest place. God is your strength in your darkest place. God is your strength in your darkest place. Sometimes in life you're going to find darkest hours. Hours where time becomes still. It feels as if it does. Because so much trouble is around you. And you want to come out of that trouble, but it's the darkest hour of your life. Yeah. You've been through hell before, but you ain't never experienced this type of hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do I have a witness? Anybody? Yeah. And you can understand where I'm coming from with yeah. this. Yeah. Some things in life, sometimes it gets hard yeah. in life. Yeah. But you get to a point where it feels like you're in a dungeon or a ditch, and it's hard to come out of. Yeah. Have you ever been in a place like that? Yeah. Where it's hard to come out of this place? It's a dark place. It's a messed up place. It's a tore up place. 
It's a mind-disturbing place. If you're not careful, you can lose your mind in that type of place. If you're not careful, you can commit suicide in that type of place. If you're not careful, the devil will destroy you in that type of place. If you're not careful, you lose your faith in that place. But it happened in that place. You can testify. You can give a testimony. But it's not until you tell somebody how you came out of that thing and what you did while you was in that thing when they start believing you and trusting and saying, oh my God, if I just look towards the hill, we just come and find help and find help come from you. But it's a place that's hard to come out. I don't know if you've ever been in that place. Maybe you were thinking in sin and that sin was weighing you down. It was hard to come out of that place. But you forgot that God is your strength. But that's why I love when God, the Bible says that I am a present help in a time of trouble. Somebody, I'll tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, get in some trouble and watch God act a fool in your life. Show up in your life. Yeah. God will make a way out of nowhere. Yeah. God will prepare a place yeah. in the presence of your enemies. Yeah. God will do some things that you've never seen. Yeah. God will do some strange things. Yeah. God will turn your mind around. Yeah. God will change your life. You think you were thinking in sin, yeah. but God will wipe it right from your yeah. tongue. Yeah. Somebody say, God will take it away. Yeah. He'll take it away. He'll bring you out that dark place. He'll rescue you. God is a rescuer. He'll rescue you. He'll snatch you out of there. When the enemy thought he had you, when he thought he had you bound, he had you by the foot, and you tried to get out, but he pulled you right back down. You tried to climb out again, but he pulled you right back down. God, my God, is your strength in the darkest place. Yeah. Then that brings us to Psalm 59, verse 16. Psalm 59, verse 16. And he said, but I will sing of your strength. In the morning, I will sing of your love. For you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. So write this down as number two. God is your defense and escape. He's your defense and your escape. So God is your defense in your escape. It's something about when you're watching football. A quarterback can get hit at any time. But he's not expecting to get hit if you have a great offensive line protecting him. He's not expecting it. Though every once in a while, he'll get knocked down. It's called a sack. He'll get sacked. Now, I don't know if he's going to fumble or not. That's his business. But at times, he will get set. So, when you have an offensive line protecting the quarterback, it's like a shield of the front line. Because on the other side of that line is the opposing opponent. Your opponent. Okay. Your enemy. Yeah, all right. And that enemy, that defense, wants to attack the offense. Yeah. And so they got to protect the quarterback because the quarterback has the ball. Yeah. And if he has the possession of the ball, he don't want to lose the ball. Okay. But he wants to accrue yardage right, 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 right. by utilizing the ball right, right. and the rest of his players. Yeah. But if there's no protection, how can you protect the ball? How can you gain any yardage if there's no protection? If there's no defense, if there's no offense, if there's nothing to protect you, no way of escape, it's hard to protect the ball. And so God is your defense, and he's your way of escape. So in order for that quarterback to get out of that pocket and move around, he got to have some type of protection. Yeah. In, order you, in order for you to be successful in life, yeah. in order for things to happen in your life, you got to remember who is your defense and your 
escape. Who is your escape? He said, I'm going to prepare a way of escape for you. But you got to hold on to me. Don't fumble the ball. They're going to hit you left and right. But you got to learn to come out of that hole. You got to learn to find your way out of that mess. Because I'm with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh my God, this is David talking. David said, he's my defense. He's my fortress. He's my refuge in the time of trouble. So I know God got me. I can't fumble that ball. I got to carry it. I got to take the tough hit. Yes, we going to get knocked down. But the Bible says you got to learn to get back up. And keep running for God. Somebody say, I'm going to keep running. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep running. They may push me down. But I'm going to keep running. They may knock me down. But I'm going to keep running. I'm not afraid of the arrows by night. Nor by the arrows by day. For the Lord is my salvation. He's the strength of my life. Why would I be afraid of it? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises to the pay shall be condemned. I serve a God who keeps me. I serve a God who covers me when I lay in the bed at night. I serve a God who watches over me when I'm on the railroad riding the train. I serve a God who's there with me all day long. Do anybody serve a God? Psalm 73 and 26. Psalm 73 and 26. Psalm 73, verse 26. He says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart in my portion forever. Everybody can't say that about God. If you've never been through nothing, you don't know what God is or who he is. All you can do is tell me what your grandmama or your mama or your daddy told you. But you don't have any experience with God if you never went through anything. So number three, write this down. God is the prescription for our hearts. God is the prescription for our hearts. You know why? Because he's our possession. And when I possess God, I feel more power. Yeah. When I possess God, yeah. oh my God, I feel like miracles can happen. Right. Yeah. When I possess God, yeah. gifts begin to display. When I, dis when, I, when, I, when I possess God, the enemy begins to tremble. Yeah. It's something about the name of Jesus. <laughs> something happens when you say that name. Yeah. See, the enemy wants to come in your life yeah. and destroy your family. He wants to destroy your workplace. Yeah. He wants to destroy your business. He wants to destroy your kids. You want to destroy your grandkids. But I'm here to tell you, when you serve God, the enemy are trying to come on your territory. But oh my God, if he's going to avoid that sign, no trespassing. He ain't worried about that sign. He's going to come on your territory. But you got to be ready to go while you're standing on that territory. Because everybody in your family ain't saved. So they're depending on you to talk to God. And pray to God. Get you a few prayer warnings. Yeah. And go into prayer. And pray in the spirit. Because everything can't be done with these. Yeah. Everything can't be done with that. But oh, when I go in the spirit, demons begin to tremble. Because I serve a God yeah. who can destroy anything. I serve a God who created everything. Yeah. I serve a God who can move mountains. I serve a God who can bring you out. Isaiah 12, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. It says, surely, somebody say surely. Surely, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. 
He has become my salvation. Yeah. And it's the eagle eyed prophet talking. Hmm. So write this down. God is our deliverance in our praise song. Yeah. He's your deliverance in your praise song. So he says, I will trust and not be afraid. Uh, See, a lot of us trust God. Yeah. But then we're still afraid. Yeah. I trust what you're going to do, but I'm going to continue to pray about the same thing over and over. <laughs> yeah. 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 So are you really trusting? What is it? Uh -huh. But you shake it in your boots. Mm. <laughs> you want to give it to God, but you're scared. Yeah. You're afraid. You thought you gave it to God. You came to the altar with tears and snot. Running out of your door. Oh, y'all know we can get. Oh, we can show hot now. We can put on a show. But the thing about it, all oh, you really trusting in God. Yeah. That in relying on Him and knowing that He is your strength. That He is your source of strength. That He is your song. That He is your salvation. That He is everything that you need. He's reliable. Yes, he He's dependable. Yeah. He'll go out his way for you. Yes, he will. He's done it before and he'll do it again. God will deliver you. Yeah. And we all know that because we all been delivered. Yeah. That's why we're sitting here right now. Yeah. Praising Jesus Christ because we have received salvation. Yeah. He has become my yeah. salvation. Yeah. Jeremiah 32, 17. Jeremiah 32nd chapter, verse 17. And it says, Oh, somebody say, Oh, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. I believe one of the ministers preached this not so long ago. Nothing is too hard for you. So write this down, number five. God is our everlasting arm. God is our everlasting arm. Why do I need another arm when he's my everlasting arm? Why do I need another uh, point? Of, why, why do I need another source when he is that? Why? He's complete. He, he's, com he's completed my life because that's who he is. Because he's satisfied. Israel Holden wrote a song, with long life, you will satisfy me. Yeah. Yeah. Then he reiterates, you will satisfy me. Yeah. Then he reiterates, you will satisfy me with yeah. long life. Yeah. Now he's the everlasting arm. Yes, so it's something about how God stretches out his arm yeah. when we're in trouble. Yeah. How many of you believe that, that when you're going through something, you're going through hell and high water. You, you just, oh my God, your mind is just bubbling. you just confused. It just feels like your head is cloudy. Just cloudy, just full. And you don't know what to think. You don't know what to do. But all I know is God uses that arm. And he stretches out for you to get you out of that trouble. Somebody say he stretched out for me. And got me out of that trouble. He brought me out of that trouble. He delivered me out of that trouble. I may have started that mess. But God finished it. I, I shouldn't have opened my mouth and said nothing. But God came and got me out of it. My God. Won't God do it? God is a forgiving God. God is a holy God. And God will come to your rescue. I heard a preacher say, God will tear up heaven just to come to your rescue. God will rip everything out there just to come get you out. How many of you believe that God will do it? He'll stretch out. Somebody say he pulled me in. I'm not the same. He pulled me in. My mind ain't the same. I, I used to think nasty things, but God has brought me out. I used to do nasty things, but God has brought me out. I used to act a fool, but God brought me out. I used to act crazy, but God brought me out. Somebody say now I'm crazy for God. He just put me 
in another atmosphere that crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Second Thessalonians 3 and 3. We almost finished. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. How many of you know that he's faithful? Yeah. And he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. He will strengthen you and protect you from the what? Evil. From the evil one. How many know who was the evil one? Yeah. Satan. Yeah. Satan and his nymphs. Yeah. So write this down for number uh, six. Yeah. God is your preserver who stabilizes you. All right. God is your preserver who stabilizes you. The God who saves. He's the God who saves. That's why he said, that's why Paul is saying, but the Lord is faithful. <laughs> because obviously there was some kind of doubt that the transition comes, but the Lord is faithful. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're going through hell right now, church. That's what Paul is telling the church. I know you're going through it. I know you're going through the deepest valleys. I know you're being persecuted. I know all these things going on in the, in, in the land of Thessalonica. But what I'm telling you is, but the Lord is faithful and he was stricken you. How many know he will strengthen you? Yeah. He will strengthen you. He will protect you from the evil one. Because yeah. the evil one is seeking whom he may devour. And he's like a roaring lion. Oh, and he's looking and he's yeah. going to sift you like wheat. That's why, that's why Jesus told Peter, Peter, after you go through this thing, after the devil sift you like wheat, then you'll be able to strengthen your brothers. See, sometimes you got to go through it. God to let the enemy in your life to attack, but he only let him go so far. Because what he's trying to do is trying to increase you, strengthen you, grow you, mature you in Christianity. So that you have a great relationship with him. And not only that, but the ultimate goal is so that he can get the glory. So when he brings you out, it's not about you. It's about his glory. So somebody, he saved you. He, how? Somebody say, how did he save me? He made you stable in him. You have a stable mind. Because an unstable man is not of God. Yeah. But he stables you. He makes you yeah. stable. He fixes you. He, he makes you firm. Yeah. Yeah. He sculpts you. He says, I'm the potter. You're the clay. I make you and I mold you. I shape you into what I want you to be. I'm going to breathe a new man into existence. I'm going to bring a new woman of God into existence. Oh, they know you from the old school. But oh, you totally different now, baby. Oh, my God. You was about getting people drunk and getting people crazy back then. But now you're about saving lives. Oh, I'm going to turn your life around. But that's what God does. Don't worry about the evil one. The evil one going to do his job. But you got to stay faithful knowing who he is. You got to believe in the unseen. You gotta believe in all yeah, and believe that God is gonna change your life. Yes, yeah. And that brings us to our last one. Yeah. Those of you saying about time. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, somebody say finally. finally. Somebody say finally. 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 Be strong in the Lord. In his might. Yeah. His mighty power. Finally be strong in the Lord. And in his mighty power. That's it. So number seven. The Lord is your might in power. The Lord is your might in power. He's your might and power. That's what he is. The Lord is your might and power. So that was God's mighty power at work when he incarnated himself inside the Virgin Mary, right? Yes. Yeah. Didn't he do it? Yes. yes. Inside of a virgin woman. Right. That was his mighty power when he performed miracles, right? Yeah. Yeah. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. Yeah. He did all this. He turned, he, he got the party going. He kept it going. Yeah. He turned water into wine. Yeah. Didn't he do it? He fed 5,000 with what? Two fish and five loaves of bread. Yeah. He healed the woman 
over with the issue of blood. He healed the blind man. He healed the lame man. He healed the leper. This is God. He raised the dead. He said, Lazarus, come forth and he came back. I'm telling you, he's God. And he can do it. He said, I am the resurrection.
and that mighty power has changed our minds today. Our minds are now changed. It's renewed because of his mighty power. His transforming power. And that's why Paul said, finally, be strong in the Lord. And in his mighty power. Why do you fear the enemy? He said, no, put on the whole on. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the belt. True. Gird yourself. The preparation. Cover yourself. Paul was encouraging for prison when he wrote this. He was in Rome in prison. About to die. But he's encouraging us for prison. He's looking at a Roman soldier and he's writing down everything the Roman soldier have on and he's utilizing it and he's making that example, that reference, he's referring it to the gospel. He said, put on these things. Put on your protection. The enemy going to try to come and destroy what you built. But thank God you got a praying mama. Thank God you got a praying daddy. Thank God you had a praying grandmama. Because God right mind you were not there yet but somebody prayed for you yeah. when you didn't even know yeah. for you to be in the church a part of the church a part of God's future kingdom but put on these things every morning put on these things gird yourself put on the whole arm of God because the enemy wants to seal you like we and he'll do it if you let him do it. That's right. That's right. If you'll believe in Christ, he cannot possess you because you have the Holy Spirit in you. But what he'll do, he'll attack you from the outside. He'll attack your children. He'll attack your grandchildren. He'll possess their mind. And then that brings us into Rome. Into Romans. One. And that's what Jesus said, well, I gave them over to a reprobate mind. They'll never come back. Because I gave them chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. After chance, after chance. But they didn't want me. They denied me. If the Jews would have accepted Jesus when he came on earth, he would have started his kingdom right there. But he knew they was going to reject him. So that's what Paul said. That's what Paul says. Well, now it's to the Gentiles. And the Jews got mad about it. That now we have Jesus. Yeah. The doors of the church open. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street. Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.